Hello, this is David Russell. I'm the Chief Technology Officer at LPA. Today I'd like to introduce you to uh, IBM's Visual Insights, specifically Visual Inspector. Uh, it's really talking about accessible AI for visual inspection. How can you pull in AI and machine learning to your operations to improve the visual inspection process in your manufacturing? We start with Visual Inspector at first. It's an iOS-centric app. It is designed to make it quick and easy uh, to deploy visual inspection in whatever environment you're working in. It's been developed over the past few years by IBM in conjunction with Apple and others in defining an application to support visual inspection and to provide those features in the automotive industry initially. But all of the issues and all of the uh, solution here translate well to any manufacturing organization that may have visual inspection needs. So what is Visual Inspector really? Uh, as I said, it's it works as an iOS application. You can use that application to capture images of the things that you want to inspect and detect the particular flaws that you may be trying to avoid. You take those captured images, you use a server that is the Visual Insights server, and that's the piece that's the Visual Insights component. Uh, and on that server, you train your models, and then you can deploy those to be used in the field. You can use those directly with the iPhone application itself to run that uh, model and to identify objects automatically. Uh, and to identify the features of interest in your visual inspection process. Though the iOS application makes it quick and easy to get started with training and building these models as well as deploying them. You can also deploy to other platforms as well within the Visual Insights environment. Uh, you can deploy to an application with a computer running multiple cameras. Uh, you, so you have those options. Visual Inspector, though, that we're talking about today is the iOS application that supports this rapid return on investment when it comes to visual inspection. In the automotive industry, we've looked at a number of different areas, everything from uh, weld inspection to checking to make sure the right parts are installed on the right cars, uh, where you may have, you know, lug nuts is the classic example. You have a single product line or a single manufacturing line that's actually turning out vehicles of different product lines or different trim levels. And so you may have different lug nuts that go on different vehicles that are coming down the same line. And one of the problems is if you put the lower end lug nuts on the higher trim level, that's a problem. Uh, visual inspection can prevent that problem by detecting those lug nuts that are differing from the model that you intended to put them on. And that's the idea behind the right part of the right car. In the automotive industry, there would be analogies across other industries as well. Um, as well as correct installation, you know, do you actually have the part, you know, assembled correctly? Do you have a plug plugged in in the right place? Uh, is it seated completely? These are all things that you can do a visual inspection to determine whether something uh, is correct or not. And you can train using Visual Insights, you can train a predictive model or a, a machine learning model to identify those scenarios where things are not in spec. At the highest level, you know, what is it? It's a standalone iOS application that works with Visual Insights. Uh, the, the application itself executes inference models that have been previously trained using Visual Insights. Uh, they can be run locally or the application in certain situations can call deployed models that are running on a Visual Insights server. Um, and it provides an end-to-end -end AI computer vision environment for you to use in the field. Um, out of the box, you can configure this application in minutes. Uh, it literally is a very simple setup and configuration. Uh, and But, you know, as we say, it's standalone and can operate on its own. But when you're developing new models and you're doing proofs of concept, you're going to require your IBM Visual Insights component as well, the, the server and the software associated with uh, Visual Insights. So what does this look like in practice? So 
you you know have a situation in this case we're looking at a door inspection so that you have a car door that has multiple parts that need to be installed correctly prior to sealing the door uh, because once you seal that door it's a much bigger rework process to go and fix these types of you know problems where you might not have a plug seated completely uh, in the electrical system so the idea is you can go into the manufacturing line can place a camera uh, in a location where it can inspect the work that's been previously done uh, it takes a picture and then you can see the blue boxes in the middle picture are where the model has identified those uh, areas where those connections are made and are correct uh, it could have found a, un, a one example that was unseated and then you can also see this dashboard that shows you when you've had failures versus successes and allows you to keep track of how effective the visual insights and the visual inspector has been uh, at, well, not really how effective it has been so much as how effective your manufacturing process has been in avoiding the problems that it's detecting through this visual inspection. Um, you can use these handheld or you can put them in fixed mounts where you need them to be. Um, you can have different triggers that can be configured based on your industry. In the automotive in industry, you can have different ways of providing specific triggers that are automotive specific, but it's really not automotive specific. It's a text stream from a practical perspective. So you can put anything in there that you need for your industry. Um, and you can really, if you see a process issue, because of the speed of deployment, both from the ease of you know grabbing a new iPhone, putting it on the line, putting it in a location where you need it, um, having it you know with that consumer device with all the electronics from communications and cameras and you know cell capability versus Wi-Fi capability, all of those capabilities are open to you uh, with that device, and it allows it to be a potentially quicker install in your location and allows you to um, even try out visual inspection as a potential uh, solution to a particular process issue that you have uh, to see if you can build a model and to quickly build a model to detect problems on the line and to trigger uh, solutions. So what does this look like in practice? So here's my little example. Uh, I've spent a weekend putting together this example, sort of my desktop assembly line. So you can see here that I've created a Lego-based assembly line where it takes uh, these Lego bricks down the assembly line and we have an iPhone positioned above the assembly line so that it can take photos of those bricks as they go by. Um, as each brick is inspected, the iPhone determines whether it is face up or face down. In this case, a face down Lego is considered to be a defect. And so this line will actually kick those defects off the line with this device here that the phone is resting on. Um, and, you know, I put together this, the visual insights piece is actually the simplest and quickest piece of this entire project to put together. Uh, building the assembly line for my desktop took longer uh, than putting together the model to actually detect the uh, defect bricks, if you will. So how does that go in practice? So once the assembly line had been created and I had the phone mounted on the assembly line, uh, I then took 23 photos. Probably didn't need that many photos for this model, um, but that's what I went with uh, in this particular scenario. Um, and fr from those 23 photos, you'll see that we went through and we just had to label the bricks that were appropriately uh, positioned on the assembly line. And then we have our defect brick marked that is upside down. Uh, in this model, we had six uh, images that I took that are that have no bricks on them just so that we have a background accounted for in our model. Uh, we have our Lego brick accounted for in 12 images that we took with these Lego bricks that were face up and then took five images of Lego bricks that were face down and marked those as defects. With that we you know, once we went through each of those 23 images that we originally took and labeled them appropriately by simply drawing a box around the Lego brick of interest and 
applying a, la a label of either a regular brick or a defect. Uh, we then did some processing and then trained the model itself. Uh, in this case, when we trained the model, we had, came up with a 99% accuracy uh, based on the images that it trained against versus it being able to detect the bricks uh, in uh, the test images that it held out from the model. Um, so it's a very accurate model in this case uh, for identifying the bricks, whether they are defects or not defects. And then we have our example of actually seeing this in action. So we can watch this video and what we have is we place the bricks on and as they then move down the line, you'll see that the iPhone then will take a picture of that brick and will then classify it. Um, depending, you know, the speed at which we're moving, we may not see everything on the screen, but when we see that blue box drawn around there, it's identifying that that's a brick and it's labeling it whether it's a defect or not a defect. Um, and then the line continues. If it identifies a defect, like that green brick is going to be, it will then kick that brick off the line. You'll also note that yellow brick, even though it's oriented the opposite way, was also detected properly. Um, the green brick's an example of you'll see it get kicked off even though we don't see it highlighted as a flaw on the iPhone. Um, and that's just the speed at which things are moving. It's still recording in the background and getting that properly. So we see that green brick kicked off the line. And that's an example of being able to trigger something uh, from that uh, identification of a flaw. You can set thresholds for how the confidence level of the model uh, with in identifying that defect and you can decide whether to do something about it if the model's only say 52% confident versus 75% confident. In this case with this model, the model's almost always 99% confident that it has properly identified what's going on. So that's sort of my desktop example of how can you use this, put that together, you know, building the assembly line took me a little more than a day and a half to put that together. Uh, actually building the visual inspection model took about 30 minutes all told. And that, you know, is in line with some of the examples of real world examples for how long it takes to put together a, a model. So. We have these four examples, again, from the automotive industry. We start, you know, at the top left, we have with door connectors where we're looking for these uh, electrical connections inside the door and whether they're seated properly. Um, you know, for those to get a good model, it took about 80 minutes to go through and take photos where we simulate the uh, plugs being unplugged and being plugged in correctly and recording those and then training the model and then being able to test that model. Uh, about 45 minutes in the case of stud welds. So we have a number of different welds that are on this panel. And, you know, in this case, we would have, you know, had someone take more time to actually simulate uh, failed welds or welds that were not done at all in particular locations and then train the model for good welds versus bad welds. Took about 45 minutes in that case to do that use case. Uh, once it had been identified and we had the samples and examples of the different scenarios. Uh, in this case, under hood, whether we've got a cap properly installed or a connector in the proper location uh, under the hood of the vehicle, it took about 60 minutes to collect the images and train the model for that case. And then for the wheel bolt scenario that we discussed earlier, you know, with the correct or the incorrect lug nuts, you know, it took about 30 minutes to go through and create the scenarios that were flawed and be able to build a model that could effectively identify those scenarios. You know, the reality is the visual inspection is a really quick response in a way that you can get in the field, particularly if you've already set up the infrastructure uh, around the visual insights, hardware and software, and having that server in place. Being able to attack new problems is really quick. You can go into the manufacturing facility, you take your iPhone with you, you can use this application immediately to take your sample photos of your examples of good and bad scenarios, and then you can take those back and train the model and see how effectively you can uh, identify potential flaws in the manufacturing process. Once you've done that, it's just a matter of finding a place to deploy that iPhone itself 
back on the line somewhere or, you know, an iPod Touch or an iPad, whatever, you know, device you want to put out there that's an iOS device, where do you want to put it? In this case, you see, you know, they've 3D printed a bracket that uh, fits in that particular location with the right angle to be able to take the photos. Um, can do that pretty rapidly, get it out there uh, and deal with an issue pretty quickly. So in this case, you know, we were talking about a deployment of, you know, a 2020 model launch where they were having some manufacturing issues and deployed the camera in place and prevented 32 vehicle misbuilds in the first 30 days of deployment. You know, and that's a huge deal when you're talking about a manufacturing problem like this with a you know, particularly a big vehicle like an auto, you know, or a big vehicle that has to be, um, may require significant rework if you have a, you know, misbuild in the process. Um, but the idea was it allowed the customer to be able to use the machine learning algorithm to just take those photos, train it, identify the problems, and then be able to deploy the, that back to the field quickly and easily. And the goal here is to be able to roll that out to additional sites and to be able to um, do this in all of their operations, you know, and really the key there, the last line, the idea that this solution never tires, it never looks away, and it provides consistent problem identification so that you can identify these visually visual inspection issues that can be prevented and prevent problems in your manufacturing process. So what can LPA do to help you? It's very easy to get started. Visual Inspector is specifically designed to make prototyping quick and easy. We normally start with a one-day prototyping session that allows our team to work with your subject matter experts to identify specific use cases and quickly evaluate the feasibility of the project. We encourage your team to identify three to four use cases that would benefit from visual inspection prior to the workshop. And the workshop starts with a discussion of your scenarios to understand the requirements, feasibility, and the business impact of each use case. This allows the team to prioritize the use cases for continued evaluation. The next step is to capture sample images to train the visual inspection model. This involves creating simulated defects and taking a collection of photos of objects with and without those tar target defects. These photos could be taken either online or offline in conjunction with subject matter experts that understand the types of defects encountered. After the sample images are collected, the LPA team will train, test, and retrain models as necessary and document the results. If time permits, additional use cases can be explored through new sample images, model training, and testing. LPA will then review the results of the testing with you and discuss next steps. Typically, the next step is to select the use case with the best results and deploy an integrated production pilot and project. Usually, that takes about two to three weeks of effort. If you're interested in getting started, all of this can be done remotely if necessary. We'd love to work with you and believe this would provide a great opportunity for a quick win with AI and machine learning in your operations. Thank you for your time.